Last year I put out a video covering every canon all-terrain walker used by the Republic and the Empire. Since then there have been some Imperial and First Order additions to the list, so I think it's about time for an update. The all-terrain tactical enforcer was used by the Galactic Republic during the Clone Wars. It was first deployed at the Battle of Geonosis. It had six legs and carried six laser cannons and one heavy projectile cannon. Its six legs could be magnetized or even adapted to climb up vertical surfaces. They were considered to be the precursor to the AT-AT. The all-terrain open transport was similar in design to the ATTE, but had eight legs instead of six, and its primary function was troop transport. As such, it was less heavily armed. The all-terrain attack pod was a three-legged walker used for long-range artillery. The front leg was meant to help stabilize the primary cannon. The all-terrain recon transport was a small one-man walker used for reconnaissance. Despite being much smaller, their design inspired the ATDP and the ATST. The self-propelled heavy artillery turbo laser was a 12-legged walking tank outfitted with a turbo laser for bringing down larger enemy targets. It's technically not an all-terrain walker, but it is in that same family, and it does have AT in its abbreviation, so there. The all-terrain defense pod was one of the earliest walkers used by the Galactic Empire. They were crewed by one gunner and one pilot and armed with one heavy laser cannon. They were a direct predecessor to the ATST. Visually, the ATDP was very similar to a Legends walker called the All-Terrain Advanced Raider because both vehicles were developed from the same concept art originally done by Joe Johnston for the Empire Strikes Back. The all-terrain defense turret was used for mobile artillery. It was slow-moving thanks to its very large main cannon. They could be briefly seen in Solo, a Star Wars story being delivered to the ground by Y-45 AT haulers that aren't walkers but are still worth a mention since they are at least affiliated with AT units. The all-terrain armored transport was a four-legged technological terror and was one of the most recognizable symbols of the might of the Galactic Empire. Standing nearly 23 meters tall, it was armed with two heavy laser cannons, two medium laser cannons, and could carry 40 troops into battle. Between Episode 5 and Star Wars Rebels, we've actually seen two versions of the AT-AT. The model seen in Rebels goes by the same name, but they were actually larger than those seen later in the Galactic Civil War. Also, according to Lucasfilm, both AT-AT and AT-AT are correct pronunciations for the vehicle. There was also an elite AT-AT that had heavier, darker armor and more powerful blaster cannons. The all-terrain armored cargo transport was also larger than the standard AT-AT. They were not built for combat and as such they were less heavily armed and armored. Their primary purpose, as the name implies, was the transportation of heavy building materials or combat munitions. Their legs were required to handle far more weight than other walkers, so their knee joints were reinforced with an electromagnetic tensor field. An ion blast to that field would bring an ATACT down. The all-terrain scout transport was a bipedal walker used against enemy infantry. They were equipped with two laser cannons, a concussion missile launcher, and a side-mounted weapons pod. While relatively quick and agile, it was lightly armored and could be knocked off balance. The ATST Mark III was built with experimental armor that allowed it to be better protected as well as faster and more agile. It was darker in color and carried two heavy laser cannons. The all-terrain personal transport was manned by a single soldier but carried the firepower of an entire squad. They were meant to neutralize especially intense combat zones. They originally appeared in Star Wars Legends material but they were made canon by Star Wars Commander. The all-terrain missile platform was a two-legged mobile missile launcher. It was more heavily armed than the ATST, but far less maneuverable. It first appeared in the Legends game The Force Unleashed 2, but was also made canon by Star Wars Commander. The all-terrain missile platform Mark III was a more beefed up version of the standard ATMP, and where the ATMP and the ATST Mark IIs are, I have no idea. Moving on to the First Order, the successors to the Galactic Empire built updated versions of both the ATAT and the ATST. The ATST specifically was built with better armor and improved gyroscopic systems that made it more stable. The all-terrain patrol droid could be seen on Starkiller Base used to protect important components of the weapon. The all-terrain mobile artillery was another walker briefly seen in The Force Awakens as part of the faction's arsenal. The all-terrain Mega Caliber 6 was the next iteration inspired by the Empire's AT-AT design. It was much taller, carrying a Mega Caliber 6 turbo laser on its back, which meant it brought the power of a Star Destroyer to the ground. 
Its front legs also came equipped with cable cutters to remove the threat of being tripped up by something like a snowspeeder. The all-terrain heavy hauler was used to pull massive weapons across the ground, like the siege cannon seen in The Last Jedi. 31 legs allowed for incredible power even if one of the legs were disabled. The walker was protected by patrolling stormtroopers as well as mounted laser cannons on each corner. The all-terrain heavy scout was created for The Last Jedi, but its design was not used in the final cut of the film, so little is currently known about it. A mobile assault walker was also released as a toy, but has yet to appear in any actual content. And that's gonna bring our canon list of walkers to a close. If you like these comprehensive style videos, here are a few more you might be interested in watching. And if you have any suggestions for other comprehensive lists you'd like to see, please leave them in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.